What's up, guys? I'm back with another episode of My Mission Experiences from Argentina, Comodoro Rivadavia. Again, say that five times fast. <laughs> I know I said that in the last episode, but it's true. Try saying that five times fast if you haven't already. Um, so I left off last episode uh, about April and how she would give us free ice cream and how we taught her in her shop. So this is a picture of April. She was awesome. Killed it. Helped us out. And sadly, I don't think she was ever baptized. She ended up moving to Buenos Aires. And so we stopped teaching her because of that. Um, I think she was going to school if I remember correctly. So this was one of our last meetings with her, uh, because she moved. And so there's a giant free tub of ice cream that she gave us. <laughs> and, uh, this was our last lesson with her. Um, here's some more pictures of, uh, Augustina when she got baptized. And, uh, that was, uh, it was crazy. It was super, that was, a, that was an awesome experience genuinely to just be able to be there for the baptism of Augustina. Uh, another picture of April and her coworker, well, who also listened to our, our, uh, our stories. He lived with his girlfriend and he, uh, <laughs> he didn't want to live the law of chastity. So he didn't want to take our lessons much after we taught that lesson. Uh, this is elder Pogamon and I, one of my good buddies in the mission. Um, haven't seen him in a long time. Haven't talked to him in a long time. So maybe I need to reach out and send him these videos. So what's up elder Pogamon? <laughs> um, I guess, Oh, my mom posted this on my birthday. So my mom told me, to, told everybody with this post to, to write me a letter. And I remember my birthday was on the the day of P-Day. And I got to the Cyber Cafe and I had almost 200 emails in my inbox. And I promised everybody before I left on my mission, I posted a post that said, if you write me, I will write you back. That day was chaotic i was writing everybody back as fast as i could because i knew 200 emails was not going to be quick to respond to in an hour and a half in 90 minutes i had less than 30 seconds to write every email so that was pretty crazy but it was it was very thoughtful of my mom to to do that because it, it meant the world to me to see so many people write me letters uh and it, it felt really good to see the people that were supporting me and the people that loved me so this is uh, Hermano Cerquetti's dog. This dog loved me, man. This dog, I just play with it constantly. It was so funny. Um, I'm trying to remember its name. I, I really can't remember its name, but it. I think they ended up getting rid of it later on. But I loved that dog. That dog was so much fun. I just play with it. It would, it would literally like run up and bite my ankles if I wasn't playing with it at the dinner table. So that was always fun when I was uh, uh, teaching the lesson after dinner with the 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 Balcones or the Cerquettis. Uh, so that was always funny <laughs> there. Uh, this is Elder Ladoini and I at the Sequetti's house, probably the same in the same instance. In fact, it was, I could tell by the tie. Um, they were just very loving. They Anytime we didn't have food, they fed us. We'd be like, hey, Hermano, we don't have food today or tomorrow. She'd be like, all right, be here. Just come over, come eat. And so that was something I, I really dearly appreciated about them. Uh, here's a cool picture. So this pipe, I think it was an oil pipe. It just came straight. Argentina is very rich in resources and oil is one of them. But this this uh, oil pipe came straight out of the ocean. We actually were able, Elder Ledwayne and I were able to go fishing with some of the, the ward members as a activity on one of our P-Days. And I walked way out on this pipe, set my plaque up, and I took this picture. I thought it was so cool. Still do. It's a pretty cool picture. <laughs> so Nina's baptism. This was a crazy day honestly one of the craziest days i've ever had in my mission and if you look and see that smile on her face and see that smile on my face it's for a reason this is one of the most spiritual experiences i ever had on my mission um the day of nina's baptism we were having nina get baptized and a guy named caesar get baptized he was from the zone leaders area but uh, it was kind of our responsibility, mine and Elder Ladoina's responsibility to go fill the baptismal font. And so the baptismal font was already filled, but the water was kind of gross. And we'd been told, hey, the water is getting shut off to Comodoro. Um, when they were having droughts, they would do days of water just shut off when you couldn't use water. And so the day of Nina's baptism was one of those days. And uh, they were, I think what it was is they weren't having a drought, but they were fixing some pipes. And so... We went in and we went to go clean the baptismal font and it was just nasty. And we we're like, okay, well, it's that. And one of the members called us, one of the first count, the first counselor in the ward called us and he said, elders, you guys should be good to empty the baptismal font and fill it again because the water has been turned back on. We're like, okay, good to know. 
so we drained the baptismal font because the water was gross, cleaned it out really well, and we turned it on to start filling up. We're like, all right, it takes generally two or three hours to fill the baptismal font because it's huge. Um, well, we got to go to lunch. So we run to lunch. We have lunch with these members. And when we're done with lunch, we get back to the church building. And I'm like, who turned off the who turned off the water? Why, why did you turn off the water? And I walk in and there's about four inches of water in the baptismal font. And I was like, I don't know who turned this off, but they're idiots. And I go to turn it, and I'm like, it's already turned on. It's like, why is it not working? And I start playing with the knobs, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. The water's not on. And I call the zone leaders in a frantic panic. And I was like, guys, the water's off, and there's no water in the baptismal font. What are we going to do? And they're like, oh, great. We're going to have to push back the baptisms a week. And... If you know anything about baptisms is, or converts, the longer you wait to have a baptism or to have those converts convert to the church, the more likely Satan's going to get to them. Something's going to happen. They're going to find anti-doctrine. They're going to, something's going to happen and it's going to cause issues in the process. And so calling men, or calling converts to tell them, hey, your baptism is going to be pushed off a week because there's no water in the church building is devastating. And I remember I was going through the entire church building. Like, is there something we can do? Can we empty the hot water heater into there? Like, what do we do? And so I'm, I'm just in desperation at this point. And I knew that there was something we could do. And I went and I'm looking through the chapel. The Laduini is looking through the church as well. And we can't find anything. There's nothing to do. And I call the zone leaders. I'm like, can we go buy a bunch of jugs of water to dump in there? And they're like, no, we just need to wait a week. Just call it, call it good. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not giving up. I'm not doing it. It's just not, not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I have, I have a baptism, which happens rarely in our mission. I have a baptism. It's going to happen. And I remember I walked into this little hall. There was the gymnasium. Uh, or the basketball court in the gym and I walk in and there was a janitorial closet and I walked into that closet and I dropped on my knees and I pleaded with the Lord. I said, heavenly father, I know this needs to happen today. Please, please give us a way to make this happen. This is so important to me. And I stood up I walked out that I walked out the gymnasium door out of the basketball court. I walked out, and as soon as I walk out, the bishop walks in the door of the church. And he said, Elder, I was just driving past this church building, and I felt a very strong prompting I was to come in here. And I said, Bishop, we're going to have to call off the baptism because there's no water in the baptismal font. And he said, okay, what do we do? And I said, I have no idea. I have no clue what we do. And he's like, well, follow me. And he, he walks me over to a room and they had a food storage room in this church building. And he opens it. And I mean, there are probably 200 gallons of water in this room and, and just big three gallon water bottles. And he's all like, let's go empty a couple of these in there and see how much it fills. And so we went and dumped probably five of those three gallon water bottles into there. And it made maybe an inch of difference. And so maybe there were six inches of water instead of four by this point. And we just look at each other and we're just shaking our heads like, this isn't going to work. This isn't going to be enough. And he goes, I have an idea, elders. I have 11,000 liters of water at my house. Let's go fill these and let's make this happen. And so for the next four hours, we went to our, our apartment and we got our five-gallon drums of water. We had five of them. And we went and took those drums, those five-gallon drums of water and the five three-gallon drums of water. And we'd drive to the bishop's house. We'd fill them with water. We'd go back to the church, we'd dump them. And we'd drive back to his house, fill him with water, go back to the church and dump them. We did that for four hours straight, over and over and over and over and over until there was enough water in a baptismal font to get somebody underneath that water without having knees poke up or anything. And so we, we were getting down in this water to make sure that there there was enough water in there. And thank heavens for Bishop of Seth for being a faithful man and for being for for listening to that prompting he had because he saved the day without a doubt saved that day and was a, we were able to see Nina and Caesar be baptized that day and that was huge 
it was a huge, huge, huge blessing for us. And I cannot ever express my gratitude to that man right there for, for saving us that day. That was just the biggest answer to my prayer. And that shows goes to show that you can have all the faith in the world, but action is what will make things happen. Will action will. And so I'm so grateful for that experience. And that, that really taught me so much right there. I learned so much in, in, in La Prensa, in the word La Prensa. Those people are amazing and they're some of the best people on this planet Earth. And I love and appreciate all of them. So funny story about when, when we went in to do the baptism for Nina. I remember uh, we didn't know who was going to baptize her because she hadn't asked either of us and we hadn't really like gotten up to that point. And so the day of we got there and she asked me to baptize her. And so I, I put on my clothes and I was standing by the baptismal font. I was like, Oh crap. I don't know that I remember the baptismal prayer because it's in Spanish. And I, I got worried for a second. There. I got kind of flustered. And I was like, I think I remember it. And I was repeating it to myself and I was like, okay, okay. I think, I think I remember it. I think I remember it. And so I was like, okay. And so I like walk down to the baptismal font. Nina comes and joins me and I do the, or I just like grab her and I do the prayer and I just dunk her <laughs> and I push her under, went good. Gonna have to do it over. She went all the way under and I see her come up and her eyes are about this big. And she's like, <gasps> and I realized I forgot to have her plug her nose and take a breath before I dunked her because I was so nervous that I didn't remember the baptismal prayer that I just pushed her under. And the second counselor of the Lord takes a, he had like a folder full of papers and he takes that and he's just slaps me over the head while I'm in the baptismal font. He's like, elder, you idiot. You forgot to have her plug her nose and take a breath. And I was like, well, I mean, it happened. She's baptized. So it's all right. And she's all like, you could tell she was like all stunned that it happened. I was like, sorry, Nina. <laughs> she's like, it's okay. It's okay. And she's like, I feel so good. And she was just really happy that she could be baptized. It, it was, it was quite the experience. But uh, I probably wouldn't have slapped an elder in the head if uh, if he did that, especially in the baptismal font to make a scene. But it was uh, it was quite the experience. There she is uh, before her pick or before she got baptized. And oh man, there's there's a song called The Best Two Years. And in the song, it says there's no greater sound than hearing the water in a font. And there's no greater smile than seeing your investigator at, at in in all in dressed in white there's no there, there's no better sight than seeing your investigator dressed in white and that is the truth this this picture just sends shivers down my spine and it it butterflies in my stomach and it just it makes me happy to see because there's no better day than seeing your investigator that you've worked so hard with dressed in white um, that song is an amazing song I, I i i should put it on one of these videos this is uh, Nina after she was baptized, and this is her mom who actually came and who actually learned the gospel, and she ended up uh, going back to Cordoba, I believe, and she was baptized in Cordoba, and I believe later passed away, but um, that was Nina and her, her mother. Um, right after Nina's baptism, uh, the sister missionaries had a baptism a week later, and that baptism was one of the most chaotic baptisms ever. Uh, we were in the church building. And I'll tell the story really quickly, but we're in the church building and they had started, they turned on the baptismal font to fill the water and to turn it off. They'd let it sit and the water got cold. The lady they were baptizing was pretty old. And so they needed the water to be warm for her. So they turned it back on and started filling the font again. And the, the water levels were already really high. Well, they get in the font with this lady and they go to do the prayer and, uh, the the baptismal font water was still running and nobody knew it because the nozzle had been pushed under the water by this point because people had gotten in the water level had risen because displacement of water and volume and everything else and so nobody knew the the font was still running well this lady also had really bad knees so she couldn't get into like a sitting position to go back and be put under the water and so they put my companion in in the water with her to try to help baptize her too and she still couldn't go under. And so they put a chair in for her to sit in that they could just grab the chair and tip it back. Well, they needed another person in the font. So another one of the elders jumped on the font too, to, to help with this process because she just couldn't bend her knees. And so they got her sitting in the chair and they just grabbed the chair and they tilted it back. And I'm standing there and I'm like, something smells funny. And I'm like, it smells like smoke. Why does it smell like smoke? And so 
I kind of just like took it upon me to walk in the hallway while the baptismal font was overflowing. And in Argentina, they put the outlets a lot of times on the floor. And they had floor outlets in the custodial closet. And the custodial closet was right right next to the uh, baptismal font. And so the water had gotten in, gotten into the socket of that, and lit a fire in the church building. And so there was a fire in the custodial in the custodial closet during this baptism. And I start freaking out because the church is on fire. And so it's funny when I wrote home, I, I lettered my, my, my letter home baptism by water and by fire. <laughs> Cause it was, it's kind of funny. She's being baptized. Anyways, don't need to explain, but a fire broke out. And so I'm running around the church building for a fire extinguisher and the bishop of the, of the sister missionary's ward was one of the people in the font helping baptize because they couldn't get her under. And he gets out and he's soaking wet. I mean, head to toe soaking wet because he had to go almost all the way under up to his neck to get this lady under in the chair. And he comes out and he knew exactly where the fire extinguisher was, which ended up being inside the custodial closet with the fire. Uh, it was a little fire, I should say. It was a little fire, not enough to do tons of damage, but it was still a fire. And so I'm running around, and because I'm running around, the the church is starting to fill with water too because because the font's still turned on, it's still overflowing. And so I'm running around the church kicking up water, and I have water all over me now because there's water all over the church. And the bishop comes running out, opens that custodial closet door, and I come running up right behind him just in time for him to spray that fire extinguisher, and it just goes in, hits the back wall, and ricochets because those things are very pressurized. And so this green dust, it's like a dust that just suffocates the fire. So he shot it right at the, the floor, hit the floor, hit the wall, and ricocheted back at us. And both of us being soaking wet are just covered in green dust. I have pictures of it somewhere. I don't think they're posted on here. But both of us are just covered in green dust because of this fire extinguisher. And so it was just so funny. We, like, turn around and everybody's looking at us. We're just covered in green dust because it like soaked into our clothes, stained my shirt. I had to bleach my shirt, but it was just one of the experiences, just bizarre experience to go through. So here's another picture with Elder Ladwini and I and, and Nina. And there's Augustina putting her arm around her mom, congratulating her mom on, on the accomplishment that she's about to accomplish of being baptized. And I'll tell you right now, Augustina and her mom became our biggest advocates. They were, if we ever needed help at a lesson, they were there. If we ever needed help at church, they were there. They were amazing members and still are amazing members. Um, and I, I hope they're doing well. I haven't talked to them in a little bit. I need to reach out to them again, but they were amazing members. As you can see, Elder Ladwini here doing a hoorah for, for having a, another baptism. Um, this is Bishop Aforiseth. This is the guy that helped us fill the baptismal font. Again, amazing man. I love this man to death. Just just an amazing person. And uh, a great, great bishop. Great helper. There's more pictures of, lots of pictures from Nina's baptisms here. So, well, I think uh, I'll cut it short here on this episode. Uh, and then I will go into what this is in the next episode. Thanks, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.